Okay, uh, 29, it says 30% of those in attendance. So before I keep reading, what did we put for 30%? 0.3. 0.30 or 0.3. Of those attending, I'll call it A for attending, attendees, uh, had never seen uh, a lacrosse match. So I'll put equals never seen. Okay, I'll fix this later. We'll turn it into an algebra. Okay, so 30% 30, 30 of those who attended the lacrosse match have never seen a, one before. Okay, so you guys see what I've, I've written so far? Turn it into math here. Uh, how many of the 400 in attendance were watching their first game? So, 400 people attended. How many had never seen one before? So, what do I do with the 400? I have to plug it into red. Yeah, that's the A, the attendees. two questions how many had previously seen a game so what did we get for this okay um, let's see the other question was how many had seen it before so this 120 have not seen it so how do we figure out how many had seen it Yes, 400 minus 120 will work, yes. Gosh day. Uh, number 30, it says the Zimmermans know that they have an average 55 miles an hour when driving 750 miles to visit their grandparents. Um, so, before we keep reading, what uh, what's the equation we're going to use here? 30. The Zimmermans, I just read the part above. The Zimmermans know that they, yeah. Distance equals rate times time, right? Okay, it says they usually go average of 55 miles an hour and they have to travel 715 miles to get to their grandparents and they leave at 6 a.m. Okay, 30 says what time should the Zimmermans tell their grandparents to expect them to arrive? So, where, where does the 55 miles an hour go? Uh, okay, it says it takes 750 miles to get there. Where does that go? Yeah, that's the distance. So, we can use that information to figure out how long it takes them. So how do we figure out the time? Divide by, Divide by 55. Okay, 
13. It's going to take them 13 hours to get there, but that's not quite the answer. It says they leave at 6 a.m. in the morning. So if it takes them 13 hours, when will they get there? 7 p.m. Right, 6 a.m. plus 12 hours. So the whole, you go around the clock 12 hours, you're at 6 p.m., right? Plus one more hour after that would get you to 7 p.m. Starts at 6 a.m. plus 13 hours. 13 hours later would be 7 a.m. Okay, 31 says, if they had arrived at 9 p.m. Yeah, we're going to 32. No, we're not. 1, 2, 3, 7, 32. Is that a 7, 32? That's a 32. Yes, it is. It is very much a I can see that. I'm blind over here. Okay. I'm actually supposed to have um, it says if they got there at 9, what was their average speed? So, they're, uh, not going, they're not going 55 anymore. If they got there at 9, how many hours, and they started at 6, 6 in the morning to 9 in the evening, how many hours is that? 15. Right, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is 12 hours. Plus three more hours to get from six to nine. That is 15 hours. So that's their time. Their distance would still be 715. Okay, so how do I solve this for R? Divide. Divide. I should go there. Yeah, you can round it to, uh, just round it to 47.7. Okay, <laughs> on the way home, yeah. On the way home, the Zimmermans, this is 32, left at 10 a.m. and drove an average of 50 miles an hour oh before stopping at a hotel for the night at 6 p.m. How many miles do they need to travel on the next day to get home? So we need to figure out how far did they drive on the first day to figure out how, much, how many miles they have left to go on the second day. So if they started at 10 a.m. and they stopped, well, let's put this, 10 a.m. and then they stopped at, uh, what time, 6 p.m. So how far is it, you guys, from 10 a.m. is 10 in the morning, right? How far is it from 10 a.m. to noon? From 10 a.m. to 12 noon is two hours. How far is it from noon to six? Six. Six hours. So how long must they have been traveling? Eight hours. So that's their time. It also told, told us they were going 50 miles per hour on average. So how do I find how far they traveled? They were going eight mile or eight hours, fifty miles an hour. So that's the rate and the time. So distance equals rate times time. So you multiply those together. Fifty miles an hour for eight hours is how far? Okay. Was that the question? No. The question was how many miles do they have left to go on the second day? So. The total trip, it told us at the beginning, was 715 miles. 
So if they've gone 400, how many do they have left? 315. Okay, it says Ron earns a 15% commission. Do you guys remember what commission meant? Yes. Sales. That's, you get a percentage of, the salesperson gets a percentage of what they sold. So it's saying Ron's going to get 15% of what he sold. Ron earns a 15% commission on his sales in addition to a $1,500 monthly salary. Determine his monthly sales goal if he budgets Thirty-seven fifty as his monthly income. So, in other words, he wants to make thirty-seven fifty. He's definitely going to get fifteen hundred dollars per month. Plus, he's going to get fifteen percent of what he sells. You guys follow? Yeah. So, how can we represent how much money he's going to make in a month? Um, so, what's he for sure going to get? Fifteen hundred. Plus. Plus, what else is he gonna get? Fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. Point one five. Of whatever he earns. Of whatever he sells. So I don't really want to use S for sales. So why W? Because whatever. Whatever he sells. Fine, we'll go W. Yes. Because E. Whatever. All right. And all together, he wants to make, what was it, 3750 Yes. Or S for Shrek. <laughs> okay, so he's going to get $1,500 plus 15% times whatever he sells. And he's going to make, he wants to make thirty-seven fifty. So how much does he need to sell? A lot of money. How do we solve it? Subtract 1500. Try to get W by itself, right? Do some basic algebra. Everybody turn their phones in. Look, look, look. Many phones up there. 2, 4, oh, 6, 8, 10, 12. Pink one, actually. Oh, it's peach. It's pink when you're up, when you're up close. Oh, it's blue. Alright. Uh, number 40. Determine the total amount Victor must repay if he borrows $8,000 at 5%. Interest for three years. Um, I don't think. savings account? I do, but I don't control it. I do. Okay, so you probably will get a letter or an email every year or every once in a while telling you how much interest you get from your savings account. So interest, if you invest in something, they will pay you interest back. And if it's a savings account or it could be a like a stocks, which is like part ownership of a company, uh, they will give you extra money back, and it's a percentage of how much you have invested. 
So if it's a savings account, it's probably less than 1%. They don't give you much. Uh, if it's stocks, you could get more. You could also lose money on stocks. But it's a percentage of what you've invested, and the longer you invest, the more money you get. Invest in one year, two years, three years, you get more money. Um, but also, if you borrow money, kind of like the bank is investing in you, you have to pay them interest. So if you borrow $8,000, you have to pay the $8,000 back, plus whatever the interest rate is. Most of your parents probably have a mortgage, which is the loan that they got for their house. And if they don't pay it back, they have to lose the house. You lose your house. Or the car, if it's on a car or whatever. Um, so what you have to pay back is, in this case, is 5% of what they borrowed. But since they borrowed it for three years, yeah, times three more, yeah. So five times 5% 5 times three years, that's, that's how you figure out the interest. What if, that's just how much you have to, the extra you have to pay back. If they ask for the total to pay back, you have to add that back to $8,000 or $8,000. $8,000 plus interest. So they're asking, What's the total amount? So we do need to multiply this back. So I'm going to do 8,000 times what? 0 0.05 times three years. What is it? 1,200. Okay. Is that the total amount that they have to pay back? No, this is called the interest. If you borrowed eight thousand dollars, you're gonna to have to pay more than twelve hundred dollars, right? So the total, if they ask for the interest, this would be the answer. If they ask for the total, you have to add the interest back to how much was borrowed. That sucks. This is how banks. This is how banks make money. They're and getting, credit, like, and credit cards also. What if, hear me out, what if, you bought a car, or like, you put like this mortgage or whatever, you got a car, and then drove to Mexico. I mean, you break the law and not pay back. Yeah. Or what if you fake your death? You'd be wanted in You'd be a criminal. Yeah, you'd be wanted in the moment, you'd be wanted in the moment. I'll just do Mexico. Um... <laughs> Number 41, Timothy invested some of his savings. So this time, Timothy is investing, not borrowing. So he's going to get the, money, the extra interest. Timothy invested some of his savings in an account yielding 4% interest. So he's going to get 4% of what he invested every year. And twice as much in a second account yielding 6% interest. If altogether he got eight hundred dollars interest last year, how much did he invest in each account? So he got four percent from his first investment. What's four percent? Four percent, and I don't know what his first investment is, so I can call it X. How about E? Plus. He's going to get 6% from his second investment. So how could I write that? 6% of a second investment. What else should I write? Tesla. It's E. Okay, I'll call it Y for now. All together, his interest should come to... Uh, lost eight hundred dollars. So these two together should be eight hundred dollars. All right. Is that enough information to figure out what the what they are? No. But it told us another fact. You guys know what the other fact was? His. Uh, it said. Uh, oh, where is it? And twice as much in a second. His second investment was twice as big. So the Y investment is two times the X investment. Y equals 2X. 
So, so that in? remember how we did this earlier called substitution? You can turn mm -hmm. y into 2x. Probably both, actually. So this equation, we can solve x. And yeah, I think it said how much do you invest in both accounts. So we need the x account and the y account, both. Yeah, so once you find x, that's one of the answers, but how do you find y? Yes, y is just twice as big as x, so just multiply by 2. Oh, so the answer to x, you just... Solve this for x. 0 0.06 times 2 is just 0.12. Add your x's together. No, no, no. Once you get x, you got to get y. Y is just 2 times x. So you have to multiply by 2 to get the other answer. Two answers. The x stands for the first investment that he got first 4% on. The y stands for the other investment he got 6% on. The y investment is 2 times the x investment. So you have to do it times two. Oh. Uh, okay. On uh, forty two. So it's, Julie drives 120 miles, yeah, so it's an arrow thing. So as I read this, why don't you guys try and uh, draw the arrows. Julie drives the 120 miles from Green up to Newton at 46 miles an hour. While Beth dri drives from Newton to Green up at 34 miles an hour. How long will it take for them to meet each other if they leave at the same time? So what did the arrows look like? I'll read it again. Julie drives 120 miles from Green up to Newton at 46 miles an hour, and Beth drives from Newton to Green up at so like 34 people, miles an hour. So How long people. until they meet up? That's It'll kind of the question. It'll be two arrows going to a certain spot. Going in. Yes, they're traveling towards each other, so it looks like that. Okay, what did we put on each arrow for these problems? Uh, what, R and T, right? They both have an R and a T. But then we replaced, uh, we replaced them all. Let's see, it's Julie and Beth. This will be Julie, this will be Beth. Okay, uh, let's read through the information. It says, Julie drives 120 miles from Green up to Newton. 
So what do I do with the 120 miles? Um, it's the distance. It's the total distance they are apart. It's not a rate, it's not a time, it's total distance. Okay, um, what else we got? She was going, Julie was going 46 miles an hour. So where does the 46 go? Right. Who's right? Julie's right. Right. So 46 for her. And then what else? It says Beth was going 34 miles an hour. So Beth's R is 34. And it says they left at the same time. So what do I do for their T's? Just they're the same. I don't know what they are, so it's just T for both of them. So the question is how long until they meet up? So how many hours pass before they meet? Okay, so that's all the information. This is one of the problems where we have three different distances, right? Julie's distance, Beth's distance, and the total distance. What's the relationship between these three? No. Julie's and Beth's together should add up to the total distance, right? This plus this equals the total. So 46t plus 34t equals 120. Uh, well, we're talking about time, so it's probably a fraction that you wouldn't say like 3.4 hours, you would say. Who knows? Maybe I'm not weird. Fraction would make more sense if we're talking about time. So there's only one answer, right? Yes, only one answer. We're talking about hours, so decimals don't make as much sense as fractions on this one. Yeah. Number 10. I did that one yesterday. Yeah. It looks so cool. Yeah. Same thing. Japanese and Japanese are not the same thing. In my mind. Your mind is wrong. Okay, so I didn't put this on the board, but I think I want to do one more of these because there will be one of these on the test, so we need a little bit more practice. So is this the last one? Right? Yeah, this will be the last one. Let's just do one more. So it's it's a distance again. Huh? Well, yeah. 43, Jorge jogged the trail to the waterfall at 120 yards per minute. And he walked back 80 yards per minute. So what should the arrows look like? He jogged to the waterfall and walked back. Yeah. One of the one of these ones, right? He went there and back. Okay, it said going there, he was going 120 yards per minute. So what is what is that? That's, that's his rate. That's his R. Are you rated? Okay. And then what else does it say? He walked back at 80 yards per minute. So what's that? Rate. Right. That's the rate going back. My head. Good for you. Okay. It says the entire. Oh, it's a tricky one. Oh, no. We haven't seen this trick before. The entire trick trip to. Use us. Two hours. That's, that's okay. Yeah. How long is the trail? This one's harder than I thought it'd be. Bonus? Okay. Total time was two hours. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. If I call the time it took for him to get there, T, 
What could I call the time for him to get back? Two. No. Okay, let's say it took him half an hour to get there. How long must it have taken him to get back? An hour and a half. So hour like and a half. T times T three? Okay, because the total trip took two hours, if it took him half an hour to get there, then it took him an hour and a half to get back. So, if it took him t to get there, it's going to take 2 minus t to get back. 2 minus whatever t is. The time to get back is going to be 2 hours minus however long it took him to get there. I didn't put that trick on the test, so you don't have to panic that much. But it is going to be more like 42 or... Maybe like, you know, like the ones we did on the worksheet. Okay, that's all the information except for the question was, what were they asking? How long is the trail? Okay, what's the relationship between these two distances? They're the same. Right, the trip to the waterfall and trip back are the same distance. So they're equal to each other. Sides, you want to get rid of them on one side. took to get there. Okay, the question was, what's the distance to the waterfall? So, how do we find distance? Rate times time. So we just do 120 is the rate times four-fifths of an hour, and that will give us how far it was. yards? Yes, this is in yards. Obviously, because the the rate was yards per minute, so yeah, that's yards. Your mom doesn't look at you. Well, uh, 